What is up, my Nacho fam? Uh, just going to do a video today since uh, <laughs> just, I'm just sensing a lot of, you know, a lot of exhaustion in the market, right? A lot of exhaustion in the NRL. <laughs> I think my wife is exhausted with these prices. You know, it's never fun to get up in the morning and, um, you know, you, you look and you're hoping to see like, oh, are we a green day or are we a red day? And, you know, we've had a lot of red days lately, right? So I just wanted to make this little video. Um, and Palm, Palm came out today. There's a lot of good, um, there's a lot of good info in there. Um, I think an encouragement. And what I want us to say is that, you know, like when we had that horrific May, uh, you know, I know some of you guys appreciate the fact that I, you know, tried, tried to, you know, steady the ship and, uh, you know, prevent people from uh, abandoning, jumping into the ocean, although it was probably tempting for a lot of people. Um, so, um, you know, uh, I've been through this before, right? And, you know, the May crash was, was, was brutal, right? It was brutal. Um, but this is a super volatile asset class. And the reason why you guys are here is because you want to, you know, change your lives, right? Everybody, um, everybody is taking a sort of, um, uh, calculated bet here that, you know, um, that, you know, you, you don't want to do the same, th the same thing the same way. You know, you listen to CNBC and the Wall Street Journal and everything, and then you end up, maybe you get ahead, maybe you don't. You know, um, you know most people just end up, uh, you know, somewhere somewhere in the middle or, or, or below, you know, just, just uh, perform underperforming. And, um, you know, by following their advice because their advice isn't good. So, you know, what these emotions are... Uh, that that you're experiencing are um, uh, are designed to shake you out of the market, right? And uh, big money players, you know, they're in the Hamptons now, right? They're they're having a, a grand old time, uh, you know, uh, at their parties and stuff. And they don't they don't really care. They can they can stay. They can have the market go this way as long as they want. They could drop Bitcoin down another ten thousand dollars tomorrow. You know, uh, they can. Uh, drive the price down. Um, the question is, would they really want to do that, right? Um, you know, so I think what's going on here is, uh, you know, some of you might have seen that video a while back on the Wyckoff uh, accumulation uh, phase and all that. And I, I do think that that is kind of playing out here. And what I want to look at today is this uh, Willie Wu report that uh, Floris and our group was, you know, kind enough to share with me. Uh, and uh, we're just going to read through it, basically. Uh, this is Willie Wu's report. Um, he's got his uh, sub stack and all that. So here, here's his uh, thing on Twitter. I just wanted to post that up and give a shout out uh, to him since I'll be uh, sharing the information here. And he's one of the, the, the OG guys, right? He's not exactly a Bitcoin maximalist, although he kind of is. Um, but he charts a lot of the metrics and uh, the movements of uh, the coins on and off exchanges, uh, you know, which is called the on-chain uh, data and the flows of coins. And he's, you know, ever since I got into Bitcoin, I mean, this guy's been like the best, like if not one of the best, it may be the, maybe the best uh, analysts when it comes to uh, analyzing uh, the movements of these coins and stuff. So anyway, without uh, further ado, uh, and hopefully this will give you some encouragement about um, about what's what's to come. I think the future is very bright here, and this is just like it, it's funny. Even Teak was saying it right. He was talking about the mid cycle blues. So if you haven't read this, um, let me just go to the Tika thing real quick here first. And basically, this whole issue wasn't to to pimp any coin. Uh, it's, it's, I must admit, I'm feeling a little uh, like the crypto markets recently battered, bruised, and tired. Uh, it, it, in times like this, it's natural to take a metaphorical nap until conditions improve. Um, you know, in the NRL, for those of you who are paying attention and those of you who aren't too new, you know, um, you know, we're, you know, we, we got our head down every day and we're, we're, um, farming coins and, and doing our thing, right? So we're being productive with our time. And of course it, it sucks when you're, 
you're you're stacking coins that are just going down in price. Um, but you know, it, it's all going to pay off, and I don't think um, you know we we really have to to worry about that too much. So anyway, I would encourage you to look at this, and then as particularly as all this good news here uh, in the middle. Um, you know, in, actually in, near the beginning of the report. I mean, I'm not going to go through all these because you all have the report um, I dropped in the room and in your emails. I mean, it's just it's just one thing after another here, right? It's just one giant thing after another. Now, do you think crypto is going to go like uh, is going to die with all of these companies and all of this money uh, getting into it? No, no. So, of course, all we are is in a, a mid-cycle uh, correction slump. Um, you could call it consolidation phase, accumulation phase uh, for the wealthy. Um, you know, they, they're not going to be buying things up at six sixty thousand dollars right? That, that's where they're, they're selling to the rubes. That's where they're on TV pumping on Bloomberg. Get in there and buy, get in there and buy. And everybody, you know, rushing in there. I, I can't miss out on this Bitcoin thing. It's going to every, I, I'm hearing it's going to 200,000 tomorrow. And then they buy and they're buying the coins of these, uh, of the whales, the institutional money, right? And then they dump it and they repeat the process all over again. It takes a little bit of a time. Now they're going to be accumulating, slowly accumulating, 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 and then they're going to um, step on the gas. And so what Willy Wu is talking about here, uh, let's bring up his report, okay? So I'm going to basically read through this and go through some of these metrics with you. Um, so here it is, right? Squeezy time. So he's predicting uh, basically a squeeze here that is going to send the price higher. So that's the too long didn't read according to the on-chain metrics and user growth here. Uh, is that he's expecting a big move in the Bitcoin price uh, to the upside, okay? So in his last out, uh, forecast, he outlined a significant divergence had formed between strong investor fundamentals underlying the market that has been irrationally bearish, Ira irrationally bearish, right? And, and, th and that's, that's what you're feeling, right? You're like, what the hell, man? Everything was going so well, and, um, you know, the market was on fire, and, you know, we were all posting gifts in the NRL and then what the hell happened you know um, uh, so you know and then you say I hear all these good news things I hear about this money coming in I hear about this I hear about that and what what the hell it's just a price day after day does nothing or it drips down or you know it goes up one day but then it goes down the next two days so you know um, so notice what he's saying right uh, the underlying market has been irrationally bearish with selling from short-term speculators. This structure has continued and strengthened. Time is now running out before Bitcoin's next major price move. In this letter, I'll outline the structural trend that is taking place, the probable window for the price breakout, and finally, we can look at the historical pricing uh, Bitcoin has had in similar uh, demand and supply situations. Okay? Um, so he goes over here a little bit of his forecast, but let's just keep moving on. Uh, the macro cycle, user growth is on a parabolic climb. Structurally, structurally, we are in the middle of a bull market. This has not been reflected in price due to the size of selling pressure of large investors, likely hedge funds, months ago. It's forced a sideways accumulation band. I just mentioned that, right? Where speculators who absorb the coins are selling down their inventory to long-term investors, okay? So the speculators are the people who are like, they got in, they took their gamble, now they're like, okay, I'm getting out, right? Um, the long-term price picture, the long-term, so they're selling to people with the diamond hands, or the people who want the coin, who believe in it, right? The long-term price is strongly bullish once accumulation is complete. Now, who are some of those people that are, that, are, that have those strong hands or that are long-term investors, right? Um, these are um, the, the guys like from that micro strategies, um, Michael Saylor and all these guys, right? These are people who believe, right? These are people who uh, are smarter than the average speculator out there, okay? And um, those coins are now going into, uh, into, into their hands, okay? So supply shock, the market is undergoing supply shock at levels that price it above $50,000. Price needs to climb 
over 50 plus 50 percent to find balance with historical levels of valuation. So what he's saying there is, you know, we're the, according to the models, we're we're grossly underpriced here. This is expected to happen once fear subsides from the market. Did you guys experience any fear in May? Did <laughs> did you did you experience any fear? Right. Even I had a little bit of fear uh, during that time because, you know, it's hard not to, like, even though I've been through this, um, it's hard not to have some fear when uh, the market is literally falling like a knife, right? And you'll hear some of us joking about that, you know, Thomas in the room and stuff. We, you know, some of us have been around the block for a while. You know, we know what it's like to even try to catch that falling knife and get your hands sliced wide open, right? So you'll hear us uh, talk about that. But, um, so they're, they're, it's expected to subside, right? Um, once the once the fear subsides, right? And we're supposed to, we're he's expecting it to climb. To do this, price needs to break above its current resistance trend line. A large move is probable. Okay, so price action is setting up for a large squeeze. A significant move is expected soon. Now he's predicting actual t- week here, which is next week, uh, July seventeenth to uh, the twenty fourth is a high probability zone for a large price move, okay? Uh, so for those of you who, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I kind of trust this guy's analysis, right? I agree with him, you know? I couldn't have pinned this down to this week, um, you know, with my own analysis because, you know, uh, frankly, just not as good as this guy, right? But, um, th- th- I mean, this is music to my ears, right? Is it music to your ears? I mean, this sounds really good, right? So price action is setting up for a large squeeze. Uh, next week, the 17th to 24th is high probability. Short-term on-chain tra- metrics are bullish. Smart money has ceased selling. Long-term investors are absorbing coins at peak levels. Exchange outflows are signaling c- consistent buying demand. So this is what I tell you. This is what these guys do. They they analyze the types of the coins that are coming off and onto the exchanges and the exchange outflows are signaling there is consistent buying demand. Okay, they might say, "Well, although the price is going down, what's, what's what's up with that?" Yes, the large speculators are getting rid of their coins and they're now exchanging hands into the long term uh, people, right? Uh, and the, and and the accumulate the accumulators, right? So price action uh, expectation. I'm expecting price to break from its bearish sideways band in the coming week, followed by a recovery to the 50 to 60,000 zone before further consolidation. Okay, so now as good as this guy is, it does. He's not a prophet, right? Um, and you know, th- this doesn't mean that this is going to happen. Okay, um, I'm not, and I'm also not trying to just give you guys hopium. Um, I'm giving you one of the best analysts in the game here um, and, and and sharing this with you because like the things that I've been saying and hang in there and hodl and don't worry like too much, it, this will pass. I'm expecting sort of a, a September to start things start heating up. Maybe it'll happen earlier, okay? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, anyway, right. Important note, all four forecasts are probabilistic with roughly 80% historical re- reliability for short t- time frame uh, forecasts. That's pretty damn good, right? Uh, long range forecasts are more reliable due to fundamentals prevailing over the long run. Short time frames are subject to unpredictable events and randomness of markets, right? Uh, you know, he could be predicting this this big spike next week and then, you know, the, China comes out and says, you know, China seizes more Bitcoin miners, uh, India bans uh, crypto. Uh, JP Morgan has changed its mind about uh, uh, doing any anything with Bitcoin. Uh, there you go. Boom. That, now, we, now we go back down, right? So this is the sort of unpredictable events, right? Um, the randomness of the markets and uh, the news cycle and things like that. Short-term speculators should use appropriate risk, risk management. Okay, so the analysis breakdown. So let's get into why um, he's made this prediction, okay? And by the way, this prediction is good for everything because a rising tide led by Bitcoin, right, um, lifts all uh, ships, right? So let's 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 keep going. As mentioned in my last two met, uh, letters, the fundamental the fundamentals of user growth user growth on the network are solidly bullish. Okay, you seeing any um, positive user growth, positive crypto Twitter growth in the Terra ecosystem? I mean, 
to me, I think I think uh, I'm seeing a lot of uh, anecdotal evidence. Anyway, I don't have the hard metrics in front of me, but I think there's uh, been a lot of growth, uh, especially for a chain, you know, like Terra. That's you know relatively obscure um, for those of us in crypto every day and in the NRL, it's not. But you know, this is still relatively unknown compared to Bitcoin and compared to Ethereum. Yeah, we're seeing users, right? Um, anyway, in the Bitcoin network, there has been fundamental uh, user growth on networks. Because when he's talking about this, he's not talking about crypto. He's, he's um, specific, um, in general. He's talking about Bitcoin, right? Right now, he's just talking about Bitcoin and the on-chain metrics. And of course, this is one of the most, um, you know, important. Um, you know, this is the most important coin to follow in terms of because he's, Bitcoin leads, right? Bitcoin leads the market. So we have to pay attention no matter how we feel about Bitcoin or how little or how much of it we own, okay? In fact, we are in a region, we are in a region, he says, of parabolic growth even on a log chart, <laughs> okay? So the chart below visualizes this clearly, plotting the BTC price action to the increase of users seen coming into Bitcoin onto Bitcoin's blockchain per day. So this pink line is user growth. This blue line is just the, the Bitcoin price, okay? Now, if we go all the way back to 2011, right? Uh, and, you know, uh, I think this is when it hit like 200 and some dollars or something. Look look where the price was, 200 and some dollars, let's say this was. Um, and then this was the user growth and then the user growth drops off and look what happens to the price. It gets smashed, right? Over here in 2000, uh, this must be 2013. This is slightly before I got into Bitcoin. This is when I just started listening about it and hearing about it. Um, I, I was probably listening in here while this parabolic rise here in the price was going up. Uh, and then um, what happened? Boom. Uh, user growth drops off and the price uh, is dropping off as, at the same time. Uh, same thing, 2014 sort of a little bit of a parabolic price run here, right? And then boom, what happens? User, gro user growth drops off, so does the price. And then we went into this long period uh, of time where it was just kind of going sideways, $200, $300, and then it was up to like $500. <laughs> I could look at this little blue line and like know where the price was because I was living this, right? Um, and so we see though, we see, what the hell? Okay. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll use this for now. So we see that the the um, every time the price peaked and the users um, dropped off, right? There was a a subsequent um, you know a price decline as well, right? Once the users dropped off. But what's happening here? The price is coming down, right? This is where we are today. The price is coming down, but what's happening to the users? Does is this going down? No. This is a strong trend upwards okay so as this trend is moving upwards the price is moving down downwards that's called a, a divergence right that's called a bullish divergence right because it, it it actually kind of makes no sense right like wait a second you're telling me more and more users are coming on to uh into bitcoin every day yes that's that's what the statistics show but the price is going down that doesn't make sense well that just means the speculators are are, are, are um, turning over their coins to the long-term uh, holders. And this is, this is building what's called pressure. This is building pressure in the markets that is going to eventually make this thing uh, go, go back and skyrocket, okay? So user growth. User growth is the increase of users seen on the blockchain in a 30-day rolling period plotted in a log scale, okay? So let's not get into exactly how they get the numbers. Let's just put our put a little bit of trust in them for now um i've marked the chart above uh, what happens at the start of true bear markets in red circles see that's what i was pointing out here this is the start of true bear markets when you get this peak this peak this pointy peak right that's what that's what's happened here right so we circled those for you and sure enough laid over the price uh bitcoin and we can see they're all at market tops market tops right we're not at a market top here not 
<laughs> we're not. We're, we're about to go friggin' a lot higher here. The users are going to become piling in. This price is going to turn around, and then we're going to hit some kind of top. You know, I, like I, I'm predicting again, you know, sounds cliche, but I'm predicting later in the year. Um, okay, so here we, here we go. In, in, in my eight years in the Bitcoin market, I have never seen fundamentals not play out over price in a given amount of time. Okay, so basically what he's saying here is this is fundamental, right? This is a divergence. This is like what, what I just told you was the bullish divergence. We have a downward price. We have an upward uh, users, which doesn't seem to make any sense. That causes a bull that will cause eventually a bullish uh, uh, price divergence. So you could look at this in a lot of indicators like RSI and uh, MACD uh, histogram and things like that. And you'll see me uh, sometimes posting those charts, and they're very useful for traders. Um, and so we have a fund. We have amazing fundamentals here um, that um, you know, if given enough time, right? I mean, how many times have you heard me say we need patience, right? I'll say that in a room, just patience. We need patience, right? We're all very impatient, especially once you taste those gains, you know. Uh, you know, you, you taste you taste those, the, those those sweet gains, and you just, you know, you just want to go back to the cookie jar and 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 keep eating. But you know, markets need time to chill, uh, cool off, chill out, and they also need time to um, for things to uh, change hands. And then whales and the big institutional investors uh, are going to be there. Um, you know, accumulating, right, in those zones. That's where, you know, they, they sell to the retail up top and then then they then then they then they accumulate again, right? They accumulate and they rinse and repeat. You know, uh, as I was saying in the room earlier today, I said, you know, uh, noob McGee, you know, that's kind of my name for, you know, the the average the average I wanna be a trader or I'm an investor or I'm buying Bitcoin got guy. He comes in, he buys at fifty K he rides it up to 60, thinking it's great, and then you know Bitcoin comes back down to 40, and he goes, "Fuck, I'm pulling, I'm getting, I'm getting out of this. This is, this is crazy. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be thankful that I only lost, uh, you know, I, I only lost 10 grand or something. This, this is, this is crazy. My, none of my investments did this. I had a guy that I invited into the NRL, uh, uh, you know, some months back. Most of you weren't here then, and I just, I, I let him into the room and. Uh, Every morning, he was fucking. I let this guy in for for free too, because he was a he was a Christian brother and all this, and I thought he was he needed help and and all this and 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 then every morning the guy was like, "What the fuck is going on with this market? This this is this is the most insane thing I've ever seen." Because you know he he had bought coins here and then he would wake up and they'd be down by ten percent, they'd be out down by twelve percent. Well, eventually I just told him, "Fucking hit the road, you're out of here." <laughs> you know, it's like I don't need to hear this. If you can't handle, you can't understand the volatility, you know, uh, at all, you know, and you're going to get on in the morning cu cussing at me, like, get the fuck out. So anyway, that, that was an amusing, that was, <laughs> that was an amusing thing. And he's, but he's new Mickey and he is probably uh, still poor today, right? Because, you know, he's panicking so hard uh, at these things. But, you know, if we can just, if we can just calm down. And, and and look at the fundamentals. The fundamentals are um, are sort of like, you know, what where it, it's it's like um, it's what it, the what is really happening, right? So it's like um, I'm trying to come up with an analogy now. My brain is a little fried. Um, so it, it it's like it's, it's what's cooking beneath the surface, right? With users are going up, but the price is going down. This is going up. This price is going down. Wait, all of this news that we saw on the Palm Beach today. All of these people are getting involved in crypto, but the price is going down. That's called a that's a divergence, right? Those are bullish fundamentals, right? And this is why we don't panic, right? And this is why, this is why we can joke around at times like this. We can just farm and get as many coins as we can. Oh, if you're unfortunate enough to own osmosis, you know, that, I mean, that might go to that might go to 10 cents tomorrow, you know, but <laughs> what are you going to do? I mean, yeah, I should have sold it at seven dollars. Right. I did sell some of it. But uh, anyway, so the market is not pricing the bullish fundamentals here. 
You understand? Louis says, the market is not pricing the bullish fundamentals, which open up a great buying opportunity to those who are what? Patient. Patient. Now that's what I, that's what I, I mean, you can see that, you know, guys like me and guys like Willie Wu, like, well, I'm not putting myself on his level as an analyst, but, you know, we're cut from the same cloth. We've been through this, right? This is an opportunity, right? Especially if you want Bitcoin, great opportunity. You buy here and if it even goes down to 28K, you buy more. Um, so understanding supply shock. So let's talk about this, right? There's a good, this is, I, I really like this, uh, this, this letter t uh, today and I really wanted to share it with you guys. So a supply shock, uh, it's a good education. It's a good education, right? Um, you know, and some of you are getting educated in, in TRI and everything. That's great. Um, but, uh, you know, you read stuff like this. You got to learn how this stuff works, right? This is how you get ahead in life, right? Um, understanding supply shock. A supply shock happens when a shortage of coin availability on the market makes its bullish impact on price, right? We talk about that a lot in Luna community, right? Supply shock. There's very little Luna on the actual market. Uh, that means that it could be sort of manipulated easier down. But once things turn around, there could be a violent move to the upside as well. Um, looking forward to that. Um, we've seen this before. The bull run we had from 10K to 60K. Remember, that just happened, folks. Back in October, right, to December was driven by a supply shock that was building for over six months, completely unacknowledged by the market. Price, you hear what he said? So this happened before. This happened in the run from 10K to 60K in October of 2020. Again, I'll repeat it, was driven by a supply shock that was building for over six months, completely unacknowledged by the market. So things didn't make sense then either. But what ended up happening? Wow. The, once that pressure gets released from the spring, from that coil, it's like a coil, like a coil that, that, that's been twisted tighter and tighter. And then it just, it releases, yeah? And so that's why we got this violent, crazy-ass move. Now, blew past the all-time highs. Remember that? Right? 20K? When are we going to break 20K? Oh, Bitcoin's going to go back to its all-time high. It freaking smashed it. Okay? You don't think this is going to happen again? Come on. Come on, folks. Come on. Hang in there. Just hang in there, all right? So, price eventually squeezed upward in a very fast move, while technical traders screamed, overbought, man, it's overbought, overbought, it can't go any higher. From the sheer rate of the climb, in reality, the market was simply finding its balance again, pricing the new fundamentals correctly. I love that, right? Because, you know, I'm, at heart, I'm a fundamentalist, right? That's why I'm, I'm so, um, that's why I'm so long on, on Terra, right? Because, you know, for me, uh, it's really important to have users, to have usefulness, to have, you know, and that's what I love about Terra, right? I'm using Mirror every day. I could put my savings into Anchor Protocol and I have to worry about some government scumbag Satanist reaching into my account, stealing it from me, right? Yeah, I've got some contract, uh, smart contract risk and stuff like that for sure. But, you know, I feel better being in crypto. I'm a lot more comfortable. I don't know about you guys. I hope you get more comfortable with it, right? Especially with things like Bitcoin, like Ethereum, you know, storing your wealth and, and these kind of coins that are, yes, they take dips. But, you know, if you're DCAing into things and stuff like that, playing a, a safe route, you, you can't go wrong. You really can't go wrong, right? So this is the, this is the most interesting thing is that the fundamentals finally got priced in. And what you're going to hear is, if you're on like crypto Twitter and stuff, is you're going to hear things like, 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 like I overbought all oh, this metric and that, blah, blah, blah. This is, this is absolute insanity. It's, it's, um, it's going to be a blow off top and all this. And what he said here, this is very important analysis. Okay. This is very, very important analysis. Okay. That, the, that in this case, right now, sometimes, sure, technically things are just way overbought, ridiculous, right? Um, and you're due for a big correction. But this big move was basically the market going to a place where it probably should have been 
if the fundamentals were priced in a lot earlier. But now it's just catching up, right? It's that pressure, right? The, 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 there's a selling pressure. It's just staying down, staying down. But the fundamentals are building. The users are building. And that causes a coil of pressure to make the price explode upward. And that's what happened here. So that's very, very important, right? While the technical, I'm going to read that again. While the technical trader screamed overbought from the sheer rate of the climb, the reality, in reality, the market was simply finding its balance again and pricing the new fundamentals correctly. The market is irrational in short time frames, but fundamentals will prevail. Okay, and that's why, you know, in my opinion, um, you know, especially for most of you, you're not professional traders, right? Um, so, you know, this this is something though you can kind of get your head around, right? users eventually translate into growth, right? That's a very kind of simple fundamental metric to get your hand on, uh, head around, okay? And so we just showed you the users are going up and all that. So there you go, right? So how is supply shock calculated? Supply shock is the ratio of coins that are unavailable versus available to the market. And this can be estimated in two ways. There's exchange supply shock, uh, uses coins in investor cold storage, um, unavailable. So there, those are, those are uh, first speculative coins on exchanges are available, right? Um, liquid supply shop uses, uses coins held by long-term investors, uh, unavailable, versus coins held by speculators available because the speculators are on the exchange. They're just, you know, waiting to sell at the right moment, right? <clears throat> Trying to make a buck. This qualitative view requires the use of Glassnode's liquid supply data, which segregates users into strong holders or speculative holders, right? So you might call the speculator sort of a weak hand. It's not more of a weak hand. It's like they're not interested in holding the asset. Um, they're, they're in and out of it, right? Like I have a friend. Uh, I call him Shrinking Bitcoin Guy because he's a terrible speculator. Uh, but, you know, he's, he's in Bitcoin and he's out of Bitcoin. He's in Bitcoin. He's out of Bitcoin. At the end of the day, he's got a lot less Bitcoin because he's a sucky speculator, right? Um, and, um, uh, but some speculators are good and they can make, you know, they, they, they can make profits by doing their trading. Yeah. Um, but the strong holders are the ones who really make the money. Right. And, and the ones who, who, who can be patient and value the fundamentals and learn, well, or, or learn to assess the fundamentals correctly. Okay. And guys like Willie Wu, and I think, you know, Tika Tor to some, some extent, uh, you know, there's a lot of, lot of little fluff and Tika and, you know, whatever. This is also combining data here, right? And Tika does that too, but I, I particularly like this one uh, this time around. So the supply shock covered in my letter two weeks ago has gained further strength. Much like the divergence we saw with the user growth above, <coughs> excuse me, we are currently in a new bullish divergence where a supply shock is forming that is not yet acknowledged by price unless long-term investors start selling down their coins in the coming weeks, and that's unlikely given the growth of the network, the price action will need to break upwards to properly price in the supply and demand imbalance. You understand? So this is something that has to happen unless, unless the um, long-term holders start selling down their coins in the coming weeks. Now, why would they do that? Now, why the fuck would they do that? <laughs> right? If you're a long-term Bitcoin holder, right, are you going to suddenly, like at 30,000 or 28,000, say, well, that's it. You know, I've been in this for years, but fuck it. I'm, I'm out. This, I can't take this anymore. No, you're not going to, especially knowing that you were at 64,000 a few months ago. Okay? So you're going to hold on, right? You're going to hold on. You're going to ride this out, right? So... Um, and another thing I just want to throw in a bit about Terra, you know, our favorite Luna and all that, is that one of the things that I look for in these kind of coins and stuff, when I even saw in early days, right, is I saw, I saw guys that have been around the block. I've explained this a couple times to you guys, but I saw, I saw in our group, I saw guys that have been in the crypto game a bit and who were decent at it, right? Um, Guys that survived, right? Because the losers, they get flushed out, right? The babies, the people that said, oh, you can't win at this. Oh, it's a whale's game and all that. 
the people that 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 went out and bought you know Cardano and shit like that, um, bullshit coins. Uh, yeah, we all bought some bullshit coins, okay. But you know, when you pick some good fundamental winners, um, you'll survive. You will survive and you will prosper, right? Even uh, when the market uh, turns south, okay. And maybe we got to learn how to take profits, and we got we'll get better at that. Everybody's got to get better at that, right? That's part of why I have the NRL. I want to learn. I want to, you know, we got to hold each other accountable, right? And be able to take profits along the way, right? Probably, probably this last time we didn't take enough profits. So we all think we're, we're, we're going uh, to the moon, right? Um, so anyway, this is very interesting, you know, um, the fact that uh, the supply shock is forming here, right? So are you guys getting a little bit excited here that, like, you know, one of the top analysts in all of crypto is saying, like, look, there's, there is just inevitable, right? Uh, same thing with, I would say same thing with Luna, supply shock, right? You'll even hear Doe tweeting about, like, the uh, the squeeze and the, the, the supply shock and things like that. And it's just, it's got to happen. It's going to break up, right? It's going to break upwards, right, uh, from, from that pressure that's building. And what I love in Luna community is from the from the early days until now is I'm seeing a lot of people coming in that said, you know what? I'm done fucking around with these other coins. I, I like this one. I like I got the queen, right? I got this coin. Yeah, and I like I like Mir too. And yeah, well, hopefully Anchor can recover. And you know, I'm anxious. They're building things. They're giving airdrops. They're doing all of these amazing things. And uh and, and, and I, this is a coin I'm going to hold because I get value out of it, right? I earn fees from the network, not even inflationary fees. So anyway, I could go on and on, right? I, you know, you know, you guys know me. I can talk about Luna forever. But this Luna kind of reminds me a little bit of a Bitcoin in that sense. But even with more, a lot more use, a lot more potential for a bigger supply shock, that's, that's kind of frightening, right? You, you think how cheap we might be down here, okay? We might be super, super dirt cheap, and I think we might all be kicking ourselves in the asses for not getting more at these levels, okay? Anyway, so that's my, that's my, my, my Terra money uh, commercial there thrown in the middle. Uh, but uh, getting back to supply shock, but it's relevant, right? This is relevant. Uh, unless long-term investors start selling down their coins in the coming weeks, the price actually need to break upward, right? So beautiful. So, so we see we're going down in price, but the exchange supply shock uh, is going up. Liquid supply shock uh, going up, and we this is another divergence. So in the chart below, I've highlighted today's level of supply shock and derived how the market historically priced it. Okay, so then he gets into um, a little bit more metrics. I'll... Uh, scroll through this slowly so you can pause if you'd like and read through this. I am not going to go uh, you know through how we arrived um, at these metrics but it is uh, pretty darn interesting. Um, okay you could look at the supply shock there. A large move is very probable. There's a law in markets where long periods of low volatility are followed by large price moves. Are you guys getting excited yet? I mean, do you hear, you hear this? Where low volatility are followed by large price moves. So I like this part too, this low volatility thing. Because this is, this is where like, you're, you're getting put to sleep with the, 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 the low volatility and the, the fact that, it, that not much is going on. It's so boring. You feel like it'll, it's like you don't feel like it's going to crash hard, but you, you feel like it's just never going to really go up again, you know? So let's read. Uh, why is low volatility followed by large price moves? Traders thrive on volatility. As it drops, trading conditions suffer and liquidity dries up. Risk protective stop losses form a tight band. When price finally makes a break, the volume created by triggering the stops tightly clustered forms a large impulse of volume. This volume builds directional momentum against a backdrop of thin liquidity. That's a pretty key thing there. This allows price to be propelled in a direction without resistance. That's that that is how a lot of big moves happen in crypto. Okay, like it's it's through like these stops get hit and then it causes 
these liquidations, these forced buys, basically, and that starts the momentum in the other direction. Okay, Bitcoin price is now forming one of the largest zones of low volatility seen this year. Okay, so here we have. Uh, so basically, is what he's saying here is kind of like what I was saying, how, um, you know, the 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 the, the sort of the coil there, right? And the, the stop losses in low volatility form a tight band, and then when it finally makes a break, boom, you know, the, 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 the triggered um, uh, price impulse, the volume that gets triggered by those stops getting hit within that tight band, okay? And then, boom, there's very little resistance uh, to stop the momentum. We can see in the chart above that price stability is forming a peak, Okay, uh, along with Bitcoin's mempool being near lows. So um, mempool is basically uh, transactions, how many transactions are waiting in the queue uh, to get processed. And so that is near lows. So uh, Bitcoin's large moves have historically come in times when its mempool is at lows. Okay, so here we got the mempool here in the middle and we can see you know, this is going, this is going up, trend down, but then back up, trend down, back up. Uh, it's getting weaker. It's getting weaker. And, it, but this is, this is down, right? So this is down. The mempool is down. Okay. Uh, price stability though is forming a peak. So that means the price has been stable, right? Low volatility, low mempool. Historically, what does this mean? <laughs> this means bang, we're going up. We can see in the chart above that price stability is forming a peak along with Bitcoin's mempool near lows. Bitcoin's large moves right, uh, have historically come when the mempool is at lows. Uh, keep Dates to keep in mind, Grayscale unlocks shares on the 17th of July. Next network difficulty adjustment is on the 18th of July. All factors combined indicate we are approaching a high probability window, a high, again, a high probability, not a definitive, not 100%, but a high probability, right? And I think he described high probability as something like 80%. Would you take a bet that you have an 80% chance of winning on? I hope you take it every time, right? You know, probabilities, right? So for a large price move starting this coming week. Now, this is pretty interesting because, you know, I've read a lot of Willy Woo stuff and, you know, I, I don't... I mean, I don't recall reading one that that's like that's sort of this specific, like next week, boom, you know, he's predicting something um, next week. So pretty cool. Uh, now watch, it'll probably, uh, Bitcoin will go to 10,000 next week. I uh, hope not. <clears throat> anyway, bullish, smart money has stopped selling, All right? So this just gets better, right? Are you guys getting excited yet? Are you guys, are you guys getting a little, little bit more pep in your step now, right? It's going to feel better waking up tomorrow morning, even if Bitcoin's at 30,000, knowing that, you know, the supply shock is likely coming, which will cause an eruption in the price. And even if Bitcoin's massive rise smashes all that's down in the short term in the, in the, uh, versus BTC, you know, I think we'll, we'll, like I said, the rising tide will lift all ships and we should go up in dollar value at least. Okay, so dormancy has formed a bottom. Dormancy measures the edge the age of coins transacting between investors. Okay, so they got they they can monitor all this online. It's very interesting. When dormancy is at a minimum, it signals more experienced, smarter investors have stopped selling. When dormancy is at a minimum, it signals more experienced or the smarter investors have stopped selling. Okay. So here's the chart on that. Uh, we've got dormancy down here <laughs> is very low, but it has turned around. And ironically, you know, these are these these patterns also play out. This is actually an inverse head and shoulders for all you traders out there. This is actually an inverse head and shoulders, and that is very bullish. So the dormancy uh, is is uh, now kind of turning around a little bit. So long-term investors are at peak rates of accumulation. So this is another bullish signal, right? Bullish. 
Coins are moving away from speculators to long-term investors. Diamond hands. Now at a rate unseen since February when price propelled from 30K to 56K. Bitcoin is moving between weak and strong hands. Okay? So this is the net movement of coins between weak and strong hands. Hmm. Okay. The net movement between weak and strong hands. Okay, so <laughs> so we've got the weak hands here. They start selling, and now I guess this is the the strong hands chart. Well, this is a new one. Uh, Bitcoin's moving between weak and strong hands. I'm not exactly sure what this particular uh, chart is. Net movement of coins between weak and strong hands. Well, I guess they made a chart for this, and they're, um, I'm not sure exactly what metrics go into this. Um, but this is weak, and this is strong hands down here. You can think about this as, like, if you guys ever watch my um, some of my price videos, I call it the you know the nachos the nacho zone or the the nacho cheapo zone. I like to buy coins when they're where at the bottom, right? When things are going like this, when they're going up like this, and 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 and. Uh, you know, going parabolic and everybody's getting all excited. I'm getting nervous, right? I and I, I don't buy. You know, rarely see me buying stuff uh, up there on a run. And usually when I do it, and when I do FOMO a little bit, I first of all I keep my size pretty small there, right? Um, and and second of all, um, I usually live to regret it. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Um, but anyway, so they've got the metric here. So so this chart is what I was going to say is. This reminds me of just a regular price chart. Where does Nacho buy? Where do I buy? I buy down here, right? I buy here. I buy here. I buy the dips, right? Am I buying up here? No. But the weak hands, the weak hands, the weak, the weak, the feeble, the weak, the poor, <laughs> they're up here. They're buying, right? Because, uh, you know, they, they, they heard that Bitcoin's going to be the next thing. But what, what happens on this way down here? They, they, they're giving up their coins. They're giving up their coins to people in the NRL, okay? So just keep that in mind, right? You guys are diamond hands, baby. You're diamond hands. You're all going to be wealthy. All right. Bullish. So this is a long video. Um, it's just the way it is. But hopefully you listen to, through this, and, um, you know, this will give you encouragement. Also, I think um, just by reading through this report together, um, you know, you can actually learn a lot, right, about, um, about some, some, you know, exchange flows and different metrics. I mean, I learned this today, right? There's weak hands to, to, uh, weak hands to strong hands. That's pretty cool. And I like this down here, right? I like this. This, 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 this look cool. This looks really, this, I like, I like being all the way down here because we got, we got almost nowhere to go but up from here. You know what I'm saying? Let's go back and let's give some of these coins to some more weak hands. All right, so we need another weak hand cycle. You understand? All right. So the bullish coins are moving off exchanges. Exchange flows have been consistently bullish, indicating coins being bought and moved off exchange. Coins are being bought and moved off exchange into cold storage. Into cold storage. Cold storage being on your ledger, or, you know, in your own private wallet, on your your mobile wallet, or whatever. This is another view into supply shock so right when i mean does that make sense to you guys when coins move off the exchange right there's less coins to you know to, to trade and the reason is because people are saying like hey i got my bitcoin i got my i'm taking these off i'm not trading them i'm not because i'm not selling them here i'm not selling them here so what's the point of having them on the exchange i'm not selling coins for 30 32, 33, 35,000. I don't care if it goes to 40 tomorrow. I'm not going to sell it. I'm getting those coins off the exchange. That's bullish. That's bullish. Okay. So here he talks about the spot. Uh, spot change is just, you know, buying and selling, uh, not you know, margin trading or anything like that. So, you, you know, you go on Binance and you take USDT or whatever and, and you swap it uh, for Bitcoin. You know, that's, that's a spot. It's a spot trade. Uh, and so we see, well, this is price. Again, the blue line is just price, Bitcoin price. Yeah, it's really kind of dripping down here. Blah, 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 blah. Doesn't look very good. But here's the exchange uh, outflows. 
right? There's the exchange outflows, right? So I'm thinking here, exchange flows have been consistently bullish, okay? So I'm not sure how this chart reads, um, but it, I mean, this looks like it's going down to me. So I'm not exactly sure, uh, but maybe this is like an inverted, this is like an inverse type chart where the lower it goes, the, be the better. Maybe this is like actually up, like more or leaving the exchange. Yeah, that's what it must mean. Like the, up here is when like, wow, there's a lot of coins on the exchange, right? But this means that coins are leaving the exchange. So they left, then they entered again, and then they're leaving, leaving, leaving the exchange. And now we're, you know, again, we're at the low here, right? We're, we're at, well, it's actually a high, right, of coins leaving the exchange. More and more coins are leaving. It's going down on, uh, on, on the exchange. I believe that's the way it's uh, read, okay? So anyway, uh, that's that's the report. Um, anyway, I hope hope you enjoyed that. I mean, I, I enjoy reading this and and sharing this with you guys, um, and I think it's really uh, really good information. So we've got a lot of we've got a lot of uh, metrics there. Uh, we've got a lot of metrics there that that just show that basically, right? We're going up. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean. It'll, Praise God, right? I mean, you're going to, look, it, it, it could get boring, but hopefully you guys are enjoying your summer, spending time with your families and your kids and, and all that good stuff, or your parents. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I look at these charts and, you know, I, I, I just, I mean, this is, look at this. This is the golden ratio right here. Isn't it funny how it's tickled out a few times? And, uh sitting right around 30k I drew this from the base of this right around 8,600 why did I do that well because this was a range that we were in for a long time in early 2020 right so uh, I draw it down to there uh, that's like the last significant sort of place where we were for a while right um, that 8600 range so to me this chart looks pretty bad right but you see, this is why the technical analysts, right, the technical analysts uh, might be screaming, oh, we're going back down to so-and-so, whatever. And this is why you want a, a sort of a balanced perspective, right? And this is why sometimes, you know, you can't just rely on technicals because these technicals look like shit, to be honest with you, right? This chart looks like absolute garbage. But when you start to look at the fundamentals, you can say, ah, ah I'm not going to panic here, right? I'm not going to panic because... You know, if if you're just looking at the at your at your at your um, coin gecko numbers every day uh, over the past um, you know couple months, and you're like shit down again, shit down again, oh up a little bit, oh shit down a lot again, right? It it, it, it it's going to um, uh, make you feel this, make you feel this, make you, and then eventually it could almost make you want to quit, right? And so we don't want to we don't want to do that. Now, there is one concern I have, and that's uh, the Bitcoin dominance, and so the question is, what happens to the altcoins uh, if the Bitcoin dominance uh, starts to take off? So, uh, remember, I was following this uh, earlier in the year, and in December, uh, November, uh, this was something that I was a key focus. I was posting this chart all the this uh, one of this uh, version of this chart um, all the time. You know, I had my 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 uh, uh, pink squiggly, which actually I. I pretty much predicted here, and and I, I do think it's going to eventually come down further. But what we see here is when Bitcoin dominance and market share goes down, this is huge all season. So from the beginning of the year, this is actually March, January 5th, right? Didn't we all make a lot of money in the alts? Isn't this when Luna went on that incredible run, right? From like uh, 80 cents all the way, you know, to 20 some dollars. It was all in here, yeah? Well, what's happening now, right? Well, we see that as Bitcoin dominance went down, that means alts are going up. That means alts are going up, right? This is where Solana and Luna and Theta and, you know, all these coins, uh, Aave went on big runs, right? Uh, and now we've got Bitcoin kind of battling back here, right? 
So if Bitcoin goes on a big run with a supply shock, what could happen here is that the alts get a little smashed relative to Bitcoin. You know, play that how you, how you want it, right? I think eventually, though, Bitcoin <clears throat> will chill out at some um, level. It could be, you know, up here. Maybe it's back up here. Maybe it goes back up to 60% dominance, right? Would that be horrible for the altcoins? Um, I don't think so. I mean, in the short term, you're going to see the Bitcoin chart, like the Luna Bitcoin chart, you're going to see it going down. But generally, the Luna USD price will be going up, okay, because, you know, Bitcoin's going up. Uh, it's just worth less Bitcoin. And then you might say, like, well, why wouldn't I just be in Bitcoin? Well, if you want to play it that way, you can. And you can flip some into Bitcoin, especially considering um, this, this type of analysis, right? And if you like Bitcoin, right? Um, I don't think there's any anything uh, wrong with that. It might be a good play <coughs> for for the next um, few weeks, uh, next month. Um, you know, Bitcoin might might start to really kind of steal the show here a little bit. I think, you know, on this dominance chart, if Bitcoin breaks above here, above the 48 mark, um, and then it takes off. Well, alts could be a relatively relative to Bitcoin could be in a bit of trouble. Um, so. You know, uh, maybe it's it's not bad if you have some alt that you want to flip into Bitcoin uh, for the coming weeks. It might not be the worst idea. However, I do think that eventually once Bitcoin does sort of top out, maybe like in this zone here, there's a lot of resistance up here. And let's face it, as, I mean, it's just that the, the, for, the, for a coin to have 60 percent of the market share at this point when all these amazing projects and, and POS and, and also Ethereum, because, of course, Ethereum's not calculated in, in this chart. Right. Um, I think what we're going to then minimally get is another turn of Bitcoin dominance down to the downside. Well, hopefully its price holds around fifty thousand dollars or so or higher uh, while the altcoins then experience another one of these. Right. Another giant, like wonderful altcoin season where you're waking up every morning and saying, wow, <laughs> I have so much money. Right. So, uh, yeah. And again, you know, uh, looking at Luna's chart, uh, like I do like the fact that it broke out of this and then we could see a battle going on here. Um, and then, you know, it broke out pretty good to the upside, right? We got up to like 870 something, right? And now we're going back down. But this is just, all I could say is that this is normal, right? So, you know, I, I said the other day in the room, people asked me, where do you think, you know, the price is going? I said, I think it's coming down to six, 630. Right, and that's when it was up up here, right? I, th I said I think we're coming down to 6:30, and sure enough, look where we're at, right? We're at 6:55. So, you know, and even if it comes down further, down to 5:70, I'm not worried. I'll probably be a buyer here again, right? I'm probably going to trade some coins or do something whatever to get my hands on more Luna down here. Uh, will I buy it here? I think this is a good level. I know some of you have orders set up, so good for you. Um, I hope your orders uh, get filled, actually. Why not? Because, you know, this is just a part of the progression of the asset. Um, I think, it. I think, you know, this This was, of course, fucking scary. This was, uh, did, did not feel good at all, too. But look, you know, we hit here, and then we started, I feel like here, here, we turn the corner. We turn the corner, okay? We turn the corner uh, in the asset, okay? Right here. This was a, a pretty big mo moment, right? Um, and if I draw that, uh, just I'm just curious for myself here. So, sorry I'm taking so long on this, but you know me, I just don't do anything fast when it comes to these videos. Oh, it came down, yeah. So, all coins. If you've seen some of my analysis before, a lot of times all coins would take a run like this. Oh, nice bounce right from the bottom, but then it'll do a retrace, like pretty deep. Right, so this is a pretty deep, deep retrace, but then we we cross this mark here. So I would call this like W's within W's, but to me it's a very bullish. Hopefully we're gonna chill here. It'd be nice to even uh, bounce here, right? Bounce here or minimally here, but even if we can bounce here soon, that would be great. But yeah, so I'm predicting like six uh, thirty, um, and when you have a retracement of fifty percent, the point five fib. Um, that still means it's it's bullish if it bounces there. And then sometimes it'll come down to the 0.618. Uh, 
and it'll take off take off from there. But this would be very healthy if we bounce at the 630 um, and then and then start to make another another leg up even slowly right the almost the slower the better because Luna has a lot of those metrics that um, Luna has a lot of those metrics that Bitcoin does when it comes to supply squeeze and things like that and holders now that is the beautiful thing about this the Luna community is that it's it's being built out yeah it doesn't have all the maybe as many idiots as uh, Cardano and yeah there are a lot of people on you know crypto Twitter tweeting about this and going to the moon and Luna and all that but that that's part of the, the fun part of the excitement and part of the building of the community and the different types of people you have there but what I see is a lot of people that are really really love this project you know like genuine like a passion for this project um, and then we get so many goodies and stuff too right like the airdrops and stuff so um, you know looking at mirror um, it, wow isn't it <laughs> isn't this depressing right i mean but like my thing with mir right is that i I just believe so much in these synthetic assets because everything is being like regulated to death uh in like you know you want to open up a charles schwab account they're monitoring every little freaking thing you do uh you know if you trade too much you know everything's reported to the government and everything so really and, and then like if you if you live in Vietnam or you live in China or something, you can't trade Apple stock. You can't trade, um, um, uh, you you know you can't you can't trade Robinhood and things like that, you know. Um, but here, right here in crypto, right, we have an opportunity uh, to have ownership of a synthetic uh, stock exchange, uh, forex exchange. You know, I mean, this is just amazing. So to me, you know. And, and we have users, right? How many crypto applications and projects are on a desperate search to get users, right? Now, we've got this Axie Infinity thing, this game, which evidently has tons of users and tons of fees being generated and stuff. I don't know too much about it. It's very interesting that they've been able to acquire um, so many things. And a win for them, <coughs> I know we're not in on that. Somebody could have somebody could have made $10,000. I mean, you know, get out there and tell me to buy Axie. Anybody, nobody sold me on that. Come on, come on, nachos. I make some money. Um, but my, my point here is that, like, I, I'm a buyer here. I'm a buyer here, right? I've been, I've been, I've been buying, you guys have heard me, I've been buying mirror, I've been buying mirror, I've been buying mirror. Now, there's an argument to be made that, well, just buy Luna, right? I got a big ass Luna bag, right? So, you know, I need to be a little bit diversified, and you might say, "Well, you're not really diversified. It's still on Terra, and if things go south on Terra, then Mirror will go south." But I love the fact that this coin, to me, feels grossly underpriced. I love the fact of the rewards that I'm getting in this ecosystem, right? Um, you know, all the Mirror that I get every time I vote and everything like that. Now, yeah, I got a big Mirror bag, right? So you might say, "Well, I'm only getting a little bit." Well. Get a bigger mirror bag, you know, <laughs> that's all I can tell you. Uh, you know, there's a reason why I have a big bag of this. And a lot of it has to do with fundamentals. It has to do with, um, it has to do with sort of the macro picture of, you know, these, um, um, these onerous uh, regulations uh, that are around the world in the um, legacy financial system. So, um I, I'm very bullish <coughs> on this type of uh, platform. I love using it, and uh, I, I, I think it's. I think um, you know we're, we're buying down here. If it dips harder, I'll, I'll, I'll back up the damn truck. I will back up the damn truck and get get a bunch more of this. I'm just telling you right now. Um, you know this is Adam, Adam USD. Yeah, it's not doing terrible. I mean, remember we were buying this at like what you know, three bucks. You know three four bucks um so you know eh, i'm happy to to have a a much 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 bigger luna bag right because you know to me the gravity dex launch was sort of a botch and what's going on i I heard i had to use a command line who knows where they're going but i'm still i still i'm no plans to sell my atom i'm telling you that right now um they the software that these guys build out is just too good 
and I think they're gonna eventually um, uh, win with the anything with the gravity decks and other plans that they have for that hub ethereum assets coming over if we look at atom versus eth we see that the atom is almost worthless next to eth right i mean so it's been smashed down right this is this is the atom's performance oh it's looking good oh no 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 Wait, oh, no sell your atoms oh no we're going back up we're gonna beat eth we're gonna beat eth we're the eth killer no. right so we're down here we're in these we're at these terrible levels um but you know just in just in february right uh you know that's like well you know it's like 200 percent away i mean well from where we are today this is when i made a recommendation to buy some more down here versus eth trade some eth in if you had it oh look just to get back to the february levels that's 160 percent versus eth so you know to me adam's still a buy you know and uh yeah so anyway i am going to close out the video there yammering on way too long uh wouldn't be surprised if you guys shut me off <laughs> by now but anyway Hope you enjoyed the uh, Willy Woo, the, the Willy Woo uh, Nacho presentation today. Uh, you know, good guy, great guy to follow on Twitter um, and support if you want to get his newsletter. Um, anyway, uh, that's it. Uh, ask me questions in the room if you have them. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.